Oopsies. Look at my loose tooth. You've got another loose tooth? Where? Um, I, I'm going to show you my holes. Show me your hole. Wow. That's amazing. And you see my two new tooth coming in? I do. They're amazing. I love them. Hi, baby. Careful, careful sitting on that. You'll fall. Careful sitting on that. You'll fall. Or you, you get, okay, hi, yes. I love you, too. Can I I love you too. Video? Oh my gosh. Okay, everyone is now officially in video. Yay! Yay! Now remember though, the sooner I finish, the sooner we get to the jumping place. Right? Right? Do you want to go to the jump place? Yeah! Alright, then, then stay over there and let me do what I need to do. Shut up, shut up, shut Hi. I to work with than I did before. So, on your toes, toes in. All the forward motion is really coming from your ankles and the ball of your foot pulling your body forward, right? There's no leg motion in here. It's just sort of you're falling forward. Your legs are not kicking out. Normally I see people taking steps and I'm like, you're not doing it right. That's not what we're going for. This is to warm up all of your adductor muscles and those little bitty glutes. So with a nice locked cage, put your arms up if you have to. Every time you raise your ankles, you should fall forward a little bit. So first those pigeon toes, and then toes out. Same thing. All right. On the side. I know, it's so silly, right? All right, and then on your heels, same thing. This one, the forward motion comes from the hip. And then out. Okay, so again from the side, heels in, and then heels out. Heels out, heels in. Now, when the heels are out, you really want your booty as clenched as tightly as possible because that's what's going to propel your feet forward. With that clench, each time you lift one foot off the ground, it just sort of like glides forward. You'll get the sense of it. Once you get it, you'll be like, oh, that's what she's talking about. If I was with you, it would be easier to make it more intuitive more quickly. And I apologize. We just don't have time for that. So the high knees walking, you guys have all done this before. The, here's what I usually see people do, though. That that is just going to hyperextend your lower back. What we're trying to do with the, with, the high knee, with the high knees walking, it's just the soldier marching. We're trying to wake up your hip flexors. So the idea is not to get your chest against your thigh, it's just to wake up and lubricate these hip joints. I, know, I hate the word lubricate too, I just don't have a better word for it. You got burst sex in there and you do not want them to rupture, it is incredibly painful and totally unnecessary. So just lift them as high as you can in a controlled way. If Don't try to do it quickly because trying to do it faster to get it higher, see what's happening, you bend forward. And we want to keep your back straight. This is a controlled motion. And all of that motion is coming from the front part of the hip. Okay. Then comes what I tried to demonstrate in the gym. The walking horse taps. This one takes a while for people to get. It's just a little bend in the standing leg. Kicking your leg out. So the, the motion, the force comes from kicking outward. Switching legs. The a ball of your foot should brush the ground. Okay, that is the whole idea. There is the neuromuscular speed. It's that uh, sorry, neuromuscular connection. It's fast leg turnover. And for people going from trails to roads, 
it's just going to be good to get the synapses firing, right? So, i.e., you want to get faster, do this regularly, right? So, after that, I think this used to be called A skips, but it's the high knee skip. So, jumping up. And this is not a forward jump. This is not a long jump. It's a step. Jump up and down, step. Jump up and down. It's staying as vertical as possible. If you can go up really high and land in the same spot, that is your focus and you're winning. When I would practice these on the track to prove my point, I would have X's in tape down and have people step, then do a jump in place and stop and make sure their foot was still on that X. So step on the X, jump. This matters because we're waking up all of the muscles in your ankles and the top of your foot. If you've had plantar fasciitis, if you've had a stress fracture, if you've had anything go wrong with your metatarsals, you know how important and how tiny those muscles on the top are, okay? If you're tying your shoes too tight, you're constricting those muscles, you are stressing out the plantar fascia, and you're making everything up the chain do work it was not designed to do. So, this is one step in the process of making sure they're not overloaded, but we'll come back to tying shoes later. So, putting it all together, silly toes, it takes longer to, to talk about it than it does to do it. Pigeon toes in, pigeon toes out, booty clenched. Penguin walks in, penguin walks out, high knee steps. You can do these moving or in place, I don't really care. If you feel it in your lower back though, don't bring your knee up so high. Taps. I know, right? It's so silly. Skips. Four or five will do. And then booty kicks. Just do 10 of each, and I'm happy. 10 of each should take you maybe two minutes. All right, so the booty kicks, again, I see a lot of this, and I don't really know what that is. We want to keep your knees aligned. Body aligned, knees aligned. Knees do not move forward out from under your hips. And again, this is the same as this. It's the same neuromuscular stimulation. So this is firing from the front. This is firing from the back. Notice when you run, that leg coming forward. Your leg comes forward and it kicks back. So this plus this are two exaggerated versions of that one simple motion. So that's why we need this whole series. Warm up the joints, warm up the ligaments, get the neuromuscular connection firing, and then move. You need to do this before every single run. It's two minutes, you cannot afford not to, especially if you're gonna come at me about like, I really wanna be faster. Then do the work, it's two minutes. And if you can't find two minutes to do the work, we got nothing to talk about. I'm not saying you have to go all face first down the rabbit hole. I'm not saying you have to do all the things. Two minutes before something you already do. If this was an extra hour, I get it, but it's not an extra hour, okay? So, the hip loosening, takes a little bit longer. I know, right? It's so much fun. Yeah, baby. So, let's do it a little bit. Um, we usually do them in shoes inside the shower. I wouldn't say it's better to do them barefoot. It's just good to do them. Do them barefoot on occasion so you can feel the difference and see how much work your shoe is doing for you. Because all too often, those shoes, uh, they don't... Let me show you what my red shoes look like. Okay, sorry. I know. They're all trying to get closer. So, y'all usually like big, big old stability shoes. I like shoes that I can curl up like this. If I can't make the toe touch the back, it's probably not going to be as responsive as I want it to be. Okay? Most people wear big old stability shoes like I had to wear after I was pregnant. My goal was to get strong enough I did not need the stability shoes anymore. I'm so grateful that I don't because those big old clod hoppers don't feel good on my foot, but I also want to feel that response every time my foot hits the ground. Do these in my garage. Yeah, that's totally fine. Do them for everyone. That's perfect. That's perfect. Do them. I don't care where you do them. What I care about is this. I'll say it again. Do them barefoot de vez en cuando once in a while. 
just to feel the difference. And you can see how much work the shoe is doing for you. It's not like, don't look for a formula, you're overthinking it. Is two days a week enough? Is one day a month enough? Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Shh, don't go there, don't go there. I'm just saying, when you got a little time and you're barefoot, and it could be before you run, it could be before you brush your teeth. It could be, I see all the kids in the window and they are covered in poop, so I'm gonna do one more set of silly toes before I go inside. That is fine too. I get wanting to do barefoot silly toes in the snow rather than come in and face poop. I get that. Oh my God, that's why we don't have a dog, right? Right. Yes, oh my gosh, okay. Hello. Hello, that's Cheyenne. You guys are being very quiet and I appreciate it. All right, I promise jumping place is coming, jumping place is coming. RJ, can you do this one with me? It's called a runner's lunge. Okay, let's all do it. Okay. Oh, it's also good. Cool. Shane, can you do it this way in I front of me? I know shit. Like this? Yep, so here's what we want to go for. Notice how Cheyenne's knee and her ankle are in line. Push your back forward like this. Keep your hips straight. Okay. Alright, you want to have your hips straight at all times and make sure. Like Like, don't try to have your feet aligned. That's, this is not a balance thing. This is a psoas loosener. This is why we do the runner's lunge, right? We want to be pressing forward without hyperextending our back. You should feel it here, all the way up next to your hip bone, on the inside of your hip bone. So, That's what this looks like. Don't try to lean back too far. This is not a chest opener. We're not doing a standing pigeon. This is not a yoga class. You're probably wearing, step back. You're probably wearing a whole lot of clothes. I'm a video of you. Thanks, are you really? Awesome, thanks. So this is where you want to be. Straight, 90 degrees, feeling it in here. Do that on both sides. That's the runner's lunge. If for some reason that's, you would rather go dynamic, that's okay. We're gonna, once you've mastered that, you go dynamic and do the sundial, which is the runner's, run, runner's lunge in every direction. Hey, hey. It's because we're not supposed to be using it. You're correct, thank you. So, then we do the lunge, pushing these up. Whoops, here's what that looks like. So, runner's lunge one, Knee to the ground, off the ground. Knee to the ground, off the ground. And once again, making sure your feet and knees are not aligned. We don't want that. We do want this. Two, three, one, two, three, four. Bring that book. Five is enough on each leg. Again, you should feel that pull all the way up your psoas, almost next to your bone. Guys, oh, we're so close, we're so close. <laughs> Triangle pose, out, out of the screen, over there, over there. You're slowing me down, now you're slowing me down. Every minute you slow me down is one minute we are gonna have to wait to go to the jumping place. So, triangle pose, because we, now we're gonna, so we did the psoas, now we move for the back part of your leg. Triangle pose. Deep breath, exhale. Now it's okay to try to put your, your nose to your knee. All right, no jump in place. No jump in place. No jump in place, we're not gonna go. Keep it down for the final time. I don't get bored at home, I got stuff to do. Can you say the same? Keep your mouth shut, I'm almost done. Runner's lunge. Big exhale, nose to knee. Y'all gotta pick your battles. We got four kids. And then reach up. If you feel this in your lower back, don't do it. Go both directions. You should feel that in your attachment point. This side, you're gonna feel more in your obliques. And then a squat, pushing the knees out with your elbows. You want your toes pointing straight ahead. This is not a sumo squat. And the, that press, you want to be pressing in with your knees and out with your elbows. You should 
feel that in your adductors all the way up from your knee to your crotch. Just that. Okay? So you're fighting yourself. Hip swings, that's just this. Two, three, four. And the force has got the outward. I see people getting real excited to do this. This is not what we want. Control push. Control push. 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 Both sides. Push. 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 Okay, so think about that when you're doing the hip swings. It's more like a push. It is not a whee. Like, I don't know what that is. Want your body to stay straight at all times. Okay? And then the final ones. So, scorpion. Okay, yeah. We got a four day weekend, y'all. So, this is the scorpion in a T, kicking your right hand, sorry, your right foot to your left hand. Shoulders do not leave the ground. Left buttock does not leave the ground. Same thing on the other side. Sorry, that's Iron Maiden. That's Iron Cross. And the Scorpion is the flip opposite of that. When you don't have children dancing around you and you're not trying to describe the form of someone else, that whole routine, maybe two minutes. You don't need very much of it. You just need to do enough, remember, to bring body fluid into the bursa sacs. Because again, once those bursa sacs are lubricated, your joint is lubricated and you are good to go. Okay, and the final thing are the form drills. Again, bear crawls, hands on the ground. You want to be looking at the ground in between your hands. Okay? Yes, it is, it is. Go stand. I'm almost done. Just stand back. I don't want you to get hurt. Stand back. That's not back. That's not back. That's not. There we go. So rock out kicks. Try not to lower your hand. Just lift your foot. Or try to keep your arm in line with your shoulder and kick up to it. What matters here is that you don't lean forward in order to do it. Because that is going to loosen the attachment point in your glutes. And that's what we're going for. Do that on both sides. You've seen the bounding. Bounding is very similar to A skips. As long as you try to do, the, the whole idea with the bounding though is that the focus is on going forward. So it's, it's more of a leap forward than that. I don't have enough space in here to demonstrate it well, sorry. Great vines. That, back and forth a couple times is enough. Monster walk. Pretend like you've got a band on your feet and you're pressing outwards. Walking on railroad ties. Backwards running. Stare at a mirror if you can. And get used to the sensation of running backwards. In a straight line. Okay. Bunny hops. Keep this locked. Thank you. I love you. Please listen. I'm almost done. Okay, and then the long jumps. These are better done outside unless you have a bigger room than I do. So, a couple of really big long jumps with a very short sprint at the end of it. Very short, like not even 10 meters. And then leg swings in four directions. That's the sundial pulses. I need to take that out and move because it's already in the beginning. So that's it. That's your whole warm up, start to finish. It's about seven minutes. 
once I get it rememorized and don't have kids around, I will come try to demonstrate it again. Any more questions, let me know. You, uh, so Karen, you can add these whenever you want. For my people doing three days at the fair and my ultra runners, you got to do all of these after, before every single run. Because you're going to be running so much, your hips are going to get janky, and we need to make sure that they don't get janky, and we really need to take care of that psoas muscle, all right? Yay! Everybody else, you can do these whenever you want, but me personally, when, I, when I'm fit, as I'm, I'm working back towards it, I do these before every single run I do. It's worth it to me. So, but I know it's not to everyone just saying three days at the fair. You don't get the, you don't have the luxury of saying no. Yay!